financial issues are never easy to deal with. Thankfully, there are people ready and willing to help. One day, a less fortunate man married a gorgeous woman, and when he got home, her deeds brought him to tears. Simultaneously, Sveta, who worked nights at the neighborhood garage, noticed a rough-looking man hanging about. Even though Sveta didn't know who he was at first, she soon found out when he began rummaging through the trash cans in quest of food. Sveta wanted to help but refrained, fearing reprisals from her manager who kept an eye on security cameras. She finally decided not to step in because the man was acting in a non-threatening manner and was diligently clearing any trash that had fallen. Sveta understood his predicament, having recently gone through her own trials of divorcing her husband for adultery and taking on the role of single caregiver for her two kids, six-year-old Natasha and five-year-old Ivan. Sveta found it especially difficult to get by on a single income, which frequently forced her to forego meals to make sure her kids were fed well. Sveta watched the man more intently as he carried on his search and saw that, in spite of his disheveled look, he was quite gorgeous and relatively young, maybe in his thirties. After he had given up trying to find food, the man stepped away from the bin. Feeling sorry for him, Sveta took some food that she could safely discard and put it in the trash can the man had been looking through. After seeing her behavior, the homeless man went back to the bin and found the food that had been given. Even though her life was difficult, Sveta acknowledged that she still had more than some who had nothing and felt relieved that she could help him in some tiny manner. The man went back through the trash the next day to see if anything had been added. Relieved to find nothing, he sat down next to the trash can. Watching him intently, Sveta stiffened as her manager walked up, fearing he had seen the homeless man embracing herself for the order to shoo him away. Luckily, the manager told Sveta to remove the trash bags from the bins and put them in the dumpster so that it would be picked up, seemingly ignoring the homeless man. Sveta tried to take the bags to the dumpster despite their weight. The wanderer instantly got up and volunteered to help after noticing her struggling. Together, he carried the two hefty bags and made her way to the garbage. He dropped the bags and went back to where he had been sitting on the floor. Sveta thanked him, but the man did not say anything. Sveta, sensing that he was reluctant to talk, went back to where she had been standing in the garage. Sveta kept thinking about how a young man so attractive and obviously kind could have ended up on the streets as she watched him. He accepted Sveta's invitation to have a cup of tea during her break. Together, they sat in a tiny cafe within the garage, enjoying a couple of cookies and a cup of tea. With great pleasure, the man devoured the cookies and thanked Sveta. He identified himself as Benjamin. Sveta felt a connection and thought about asking him about his journey, but decided to start with her own. She described how her divorce came about and why she decided to work at the garage. After telling Benjamin her experience, Sveta waited nervously for Benjamin to answer, feeling uneasy about giving such private information. Benjamin started talking as she turned to go. He talked about his former aspiration to become an actor, which never came true. Rather, he married and started working in an office. Unfortunately, he found out about his wife's affair with the CEO of his firm, and that caused his marriage to fall apart. Taking the house and most of his money, she departed. She then tricked Benjamin's supervisor into firing him, which is how he ended up homeless. Sveta, moved by Benjamin's situation, handed him all the change in her pocket and suggested that he get a hat to keep warm. She promised to have some things for him, and she also invited him back to the garage the next day. Sveta gathered up her husband's discarded garments and waited for Benjamin to come home the next day. But he never did, and two weeks went by with no word from him. Sveta was getting more and more worried, so she asked her co-workers and regular customers at the garage about it. Eventually, a truck driver told her about a homeless camp that was close by. After her shift, Sveta brought the bag of clothes to the homeless camp, in the hopes of finding Benjamin. The truck driver offered to drive her there. Benjamin was soon found by Sveta among a group of homeless people. Benjamin tried to get up when he realized she was here, but he was clearly weak. Sveta saw he was really sick and needed to be sent to the hospital immediately. 
When they got him to the hospital, the medical staff noticed that he had health problems from being outside in the bitter cold and rough weather. Sveta voluntarily used some of her funds to pay for Benjamin's therapy, even though the hospital bills were high. She gave the physicians her phone information, asked them to call if Benjamin needed anything, and left the bag of clothes in his room. She then went back to living her usual life. A few days later, Sveta's workplace, the garage, was visited by a dapper and well-dressed man. She needed some time to realize that Benjamin was there, dressed in the clothing she had given him. Sveta was ecstatic to see him well again, and he thanked her for her generosity and assistance. As they continued to talk, the subject of Benjamin's living arrangement came up. Though Sveta and her kids lived in a modest apartment, she suggested that Benjamin remain with them until he was able to support himself. Surprised by Sveta's kindness, Benjamin accepted the invitation and promised to help out around the house and move out as soon as he could. Benjamin, Sveta, and her kids became a sort of family during the next few months. As their friendship became stronger, the two adults eventually started dating. As their friendship developed into love, Benjamin asked Sveta to marry him, and she gladly said yes. Their luck appeared to be turning in their favor. Benjamin's outstanding skill set helped him quickly land a new job. Wanting to give Sveta a surprise, he picked up a bunch of flowers and made his way back home. He was shocked to see Sveta and her two kids holding a cake and yelling congratulations when he opened the door. They had planned a surprise celebration for Benjamin after learning about his work, as evidenced by the balloons and enormous banner that decorated the area. Benjamin gave a heartfelt hug to every member of his new family, overwhelmed with gratitude. He went up to Sveta and gave her a heartfelt thank you, saying he couldn't have done it without her. She only grinned, pecked his cheek, and told him how much she still believed in him. This touching tale demonstrates the power of one person's belief in another and willingness to lend support during trying times. Benjamin's story demonstrates the transforming potential of compassion and support. The story ends with a contemplation on the good things that might happen if more people showed the same compassion toward those in need as Sveta did. That's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. Olive's heart leaped into her throat when the young kid came to her and told her that his father was seeing someone else. She rushed down in a panic, desperately hoping her son's claim was the result of a humorous fantasy. The agony that characterized the previous seven years of her life had come from her husband. It was difficult to understand his relationship with another woman given the evidence that suggested he had passed away. As her kid slept soundly, she held his hands close and wondered how she would break the terrible news to him that his father had passed away. The difficult part was explaining that their family was suddenly a little smaller and that the man they looked up to had disappeared. Simon, Olive's husband, had left for a business trip to Costa Rica eight months prior. After traveling for two days, Olive got a call informing her that Simon's blood-stained rucksack and surfing board had been found in the sea. His body eluded discovery despite thorough searches. The authorities came to the conclusion that Simon most likely lost life in a surfing accident caused by strong currents carrying his body away. After a three-month search, everyone came to terms with Simon's alleged permanent absence as optimism faded. Olive woke up every day after that terrible event, holding on to the hope that it was all just a bad dream. Olive doubted the importance of their achievements during their eight-year marriage, which produced their son Kyle. When Simon wasn't around to partake in their success, she wondered why it was happening. This was a very different relationship from when they had first started dating. With tenacity and perseverance, they climbed the corporate ladder, creating a multi-million dollar company, and their lives seemed perfect. But with Simon's passing, this perfect picture fell apart, bringing about a terrifying turn of events. A few weeks after Simon passed away, Olive got a troubling call from her bank manager informing her that about two weeks prior to his passing away, Simon had taken all the money out of their business account. For months later, Olive was even more distraught to learn that Simon had sold their company. Olive then received a flurry of phone calls and emails from the bank informing her that her husband had taken out a loan and that the payments were past due. The puzzling queries were coming to mind, 
why would Simon close the account without telling her? Why did he abandon their son and her in a state of financial ruin? Olive was grieving, but she couldn't get rid of her growing hatred for him. He had promised to keep her and their son safe, but he didn't seem to be following through on this. Thinking back on it, she was sorry she had ever been close to him, she would have stayed away from him right away if she had realized how things would turn out. Even as the anger subsided with time, the heartbreaking anguish of loss persisted. Olive asked her father for financial support and was able to reduce her debt. She went to visit a sick friend one morning and came home to find the front door wide open. She ran inside and saw the horrifying scene, everything was upside down and the living room was in disorder. Olive cried out, Kyle, and ran to her son's room, only to discover it was bare of any possessions from when she had left the house. She called out to him, begging him to stop playing games and telling him she was afraid, and then panic struck. She was crying out in desperation when she saw a piece of paper on the ground. Crying, she reached for the message, your husband owes us a lot of money. Pay off his debt by the next weekend, or you will never see your son again. You will receive a text message containing our address shortly. If you involve the police, we will make your son watch you leave the world. Olive broke down into tears as her heart broke into a million pieces and she fell to the ground in devastation. Resolved to resist the kidnapper's threats, she hurried to the police station to ask Luke Scott, who had worked on Simon's case, for assistance. Once again eager to help, Scott came up with a plan that worked and got Olive and her kid back together. Olive suspected the kidnappers had something to do with her husband's passing away and unexplained disappearance, but the police turned up no proof. Nevertheless, the kidnappers were taken into custody. Olive gave up the thin thread of hope she was holding onto at that very moment and came to terms with the fact that her husband would never return. She persuaded herself that it was best for the family since she thought Simon had a purpose for everything, even if it was unknown. Olive built her spouse a hidden grave and went there every weekend to place flowers on it. Though she missed him terribly, she told him that their son was doing well. When Olive would visit her husband's grave, she would tell him, it's very challenging every day, and I want to give up, but you are the reason I keep going. I won't let you down. After a span of five years, Olive was able to settle her husband's debt. Olive's relationship with her son deepened, and they made a concerted effort to bring each other joy. Olive and Luke Scott also became closer during this period. Olive was still not over Simon, so she was reluctant to let another guy into her heart even though Luke was deeply in love with her. I know you are broken and hurt, but I will wait until the day you are ready. Just promise me that when this storm is over, I will be the man you run to," Luke said with affection. Olive remained silent, merely resting on him while shedding heavy tears, deeply missing her spouse. She was certain that no other man could give her what they shared, and she yearned for it. It had to be Simon or nothing at all for her. Kyle asked his mother if they could go to Disneyland a year later. Olive was apprehensive at first but accepted after realizing she had been harsh on herself. She admitted that she couldn't recall the last time she had enjoyed herself after her husband's passing. Olive said that Luke may accompany them. The three of them took a plane to California a week later. Olive relished the chance to play on the attractions at Disneyland like a child, experiencing a brief period of freedom and forgetting her aches, concerns, and problems. After spending a fantastic first day at the park, the three of them checked into a nearby hotel at 4 p.m. They went back to Disneyland the following day with the intention of seeing Sleeping Beauty Castle and Splash Mountain. They had a hot fudge sundae at one of the shops before setting off on their excursions. Olive and Luke had a talk while Kyle went for a walk. The youngster had barely departed when, panting, he ran back to where his mother and Luke were sitting and said, Dad is over there with some other woman, as he pointed to a pastry store. Olive let go of the hot fudge sundae as she leaped to her feet. She could tell by the way her kid looked at her that he meant every word. She hoped his eyes were deceiving him as a shiver went down her spine. Grasping his mother's hands, Kyle said, Mom, let's go, Dad is there, and the two of them hurried in the direction of the pastry store. 
Olive turned to see her husband seated a few feet away with a stunning woman who looked like a skin-glittering model. Olive gasped and realized, it's him, her eyes welling up with hot tears. It had been eight years, yet her spouse looked even younger. He sat there, laughing and grinning, his hands clasped around the strange woman's. Olive was devastated by the sight of this man, who didn't resemble someone who had ever given her or their son any attention. Having turned their lives into a living misery, how could he possibly be happy? Olive lost her cool and charged Simon and his mistress, setting off a dramatic scene that included screaming, tears, and agony. Fortunately, Luke showed up just in time to prevent things from getting out of hand as Simon said, get this woman away from me, I don't know her. After he got in touch with his colleagues in California, Simon was taken into custody right away. It turned out that everything had been carefully prepared by Simon. He had taken all the money out of the company to launch a new venture and purchase a home in California. Olive struggled with a range of emotions after learning how much of the previous eight years of her life had been characterized by deceit. In order to leave his wife and child behind and start over with his mistress, Simon had also fabricated his passing away there. Because of Kyle's watchfulness and the police's support, Simon was found guilty and given a lengthy prison term. He would taste prison life, the agony he had brought upon his kid and wife. Following Simon's sentencing, Olive, Kyle, and Luke relocated to a new city in an attempt to start over and put the traumatic episode from their past behind them. Luke said, thank you for giving me a chance. I will never take this for granted. I love you, Olive Smith, causing Olive to cry. Luke said, I hope that's a joyful tear. Yes, 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 Luke. I am so happy, Olive shouted, allowing Kyle and Luke to join in her fit of giggles.